we will continue with a further very interesting topic, that is 3D planning. Thank you very much. I would like to talk a bit more about 3D planning and the philosophy behind it. I just wrote all in one, because when we talk about 3D planning, these three planes, the coronal, sagittal and axial plane, are all integrated in one solution. That means I make a holistic consideration of the analysis, which leads me directly to the problem. What is the situation here with the reverence values? Can we simply make a one-to-one -one transfer of the reverence values generated there to the reverence values known to us from the 2D analyzers? Of course, the planning in all levels, or rather said the 3D planning, generates very good and valuable information, but under certain circumstances this is so much information that we are perhaps overstrained with it and struggle with an overload of information. If we now take a look at the literature again, there was a publication that analyzes the system of Nuclip with PSI. Here, the focus is always on 3D planning too. So we can actually say that for almost everyone who works and publishes with PSI, it is always about 3D planning in combination with PSI. And then almost every time a high precision is published. And if you look at the whole thing, you think to yourself, well yeah, this is pretty good. First of all, you have to get there with the 2D planning. But here's the thing, the pre-operative and post-operative analysis is done on CT, but not on whole leg X-rays under weight-bearing conditions. Now the question is, does this analysis really represent the truth when it is performed on a CT in the supine position? Because we are actually interested in the osteotomy, in the alignment, how it shows up afterwards in the standing position and in the gait analysis, because that's where the patients have problems, not in the supine position. Well, if you look at the combination of both and what solutions there are, voila, there we have the 3D module from Hectic, Medicat 3D Knee, which is already available on the market. Here you can see a so-called hybrid planning that is a matching of a CT dataset and a whole leg image. Here they are trying to combine both components in the planning. How does that work? That's not quite trivial. When we have a whole leg radiograph and a CT scan, for example, we usually don't do a whole CT scan of the whole leg, but instead we use the field of view like the one of a torsion measurement. That means we move the proximal part, then the knee joint and the ankle joint, and in the program we can now merge these 3D datasets. That's what we call stitching. And then you see that only one dataset is generated from the former three datasets. Then you measure the whole leg axis alignment. And when you have measured and scaled it, you see the CT on the left side and the whole leg X-ray on the right side. And now there are points defined on the CT. The same points are defined on the whole leg X-ray. That way these two pieces of information are merged. And the software then combines the change in the various valgus angle from standing to lying. Then the axes in the whole leg X-ray are measured under weight-bearing conditions, and at the end an overall analysis of the two axes comes out. Then there's the possibility to perform the planning not only in the coronal plane, of course. We've just seen the example with the planning of an HTO. But in this matching and in this 3D module, you can directly include the axial plane in the measurement and measure the torsion too, of course, as you can see here. As Jörg Hara mentioned at the beginning, we have these combination deformities, valgus combined with internal torsion deformity, and it is measured one by one. You can see here a rather 3D model from a CT with rather low resolution. For now, I simulated this case for this lecture, and I used the normal data stored in the packs, which stores not all slices of CTs. And you can see clearly that the resolution of the stored data is significantly worse, because this is the standard storage, which you certainly also have in the packs. For a high resolution, you need thinner layers, such as an 075 or 1 mm layer. This way you can perform the measurements much more precisely. 
However, what are the advantages of that now? What can you do now? You see, we are still able to measure and plan independently. And you can now also continue to measure the torsion here. You can see here patellofemoral osteoarthritis with internal torsion deviation and valgus. And now you think, okay, now we have a significant deformity. You can see the femoral over here. We have a significant lateral difference here. We now want to do a torsion change, or rather a torsion correction here, together with a valgus correction. Jörg Hare has presented this with a so-called oblique osteotomy, where you can always plan nicely on a banana. Now let me show you a case of mine. All I want to say is, it doesn't always go as well as I would like it to. This was a case for a single cut osteotomy, a failure in my opinion. As you can see, the patella the distillation did work, the torsion adjustment also worked, but the valgus correction via oblique osteotomy did not work. As I showed at the beginning, I simulated the whole surgery and planned each in the different planes. But obviously something intraoperatively didn't work out the way it should have. And I still have a residual valgus now. So I didn't manage to correct the third level via the single cut osteotomy. Now the question is, can this tool help me to do that? Well, I think it offers advantages. Here in the simulation you can see, this is the same patient preoperatively. Here you can put the cut and take a look at the whole thing. I can now see how the incision is positioned in relation to the anatomical or mechanical axis. I can take a close look at it on the side and simply see which angulation I need for what correction. Here above in this representation you can see how the rotation and the angulation must be to get to the target values at the end. This is not right here, that was a varus of 5 degrees that you end up with zero later on and that you reduce the femoral torsion from just under 47 degrees to about 28 degrees. This is just a simulation. I can adjust it with these angles until I achieve the target angle the way I like. Of course, this is a much more pleasant way than to make this angulation by drawing it on a piece of paper. And I also have a better transferability into the operation room. And then I just have a nice simulation in the different planes of how it will look at the end. And as I said, you can represent that in all directions. Once you're fine with the whole thing, you make the cut and then it is cut through and simulated here. Of course, graphically, it would show up much nicer if I had the whole leg, but not just a torsion CT. I can do that, of course, but then I have a greater radiation exposure. To what extent I can achieve similar goals and precision with the EOS device, which has a lower radiation exposure, well, I think that all remains to be seen, and we also must look into how that can be done with a data transfer and the same data consistency as from CTs. Now, what is the future? of 3D planning, is this it? Because I'm sure not everyone is using what I've just shown you in their daily work. Not everyone is doing pre-operative planning with this tool or integrates it in their plans. I'm sure this is not the end and further innovations will come.